Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, when I first moved uh, a year and a half ago uh, from Italy, I was living in Milan on to Munich. Uh, people ask me, so how do you feel? What's your impression about Germany and everything? And, uh, you know, I said, no, I find Munich pretty much similar to Milan. People on the weekend would go out and uh, would basically go to the lakes, go to skiing. You know, people like, you know, eating out, have a good life. So it pretty much looks like uh, a Milan experience. And so somebody coming from the north, so Hamburg or the likes, told me that uh, Germans refer to Munich as the most northern city of Italy. So that might be <laughs> the case why I feel so good in that, in that city. What I wanted to do to, with you in the next 15 minutes is uh, trying to uh, take an argument which was touched before by Patrick uh, and uh, expand it, which is how do we actually scale artificial intelligence? How do we actually scale all the uh, topics that we have discussed today in insurance? It's not an easy one because actually one of the problems that you have is that the challenges for the insurers in implementing any machine learning or AI model at scale faces a few constraints. First, when you hire data scientists, when you hire people who are different, as we've seen also in one of the other uh, presentations, from the rest of the organizations, they're there, they look like geniuses, they do stuff on their own, they're pretty much siloed, but no one sees the impact, right? The second point is, you know, we need a data lake to store whatever information. We'll figure out at some point in time in the future what to do with it. Um, I don't know if whoever comes from an insurance company who has heard the fact that a data lake has to be built before doing a use case, raise their hands. Come on. Don't be shy, because I know that at least 50% or more of the insurance companies have started that way. That's not bringing anything, right? That's a lot of frustration. Who thinks that your company, your insurance company, has good data, raise their hands? Nobody. That's great. Your company is great. You're an insurance company. <laughs> because one of the biggest challenge, again, towards using AI at scale is, oh, but we have not good enough data, so we can't do a model with the data that we have. It would be crap. Actually, it's everybody's problem, and there is a lot of value also in using not so good data. Um, I love that, Fenner. A lot of people get scared about the models because they don't understand what the models do. They see it a bit like black magic, sort of. Yeah, we're scared about it. And so they don't want to adopt the insights. So you end up having, like this little mammoth there, a million or even billions of use cases called POCs or proof of concepts, they linger somewhere in the organization. Somebody has proven that something could be done, but they've never been implemented. Okay? And finally, one of the other challenges is how do I so, uh, keep the, 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 the talents that I've recruited motivated? How, where do I find them? Because actually, you can imagine that going to work for an old-style insurance company as a data scientist is not your number one priority, okay? So it's very difficult to attract those guys and, and retain them. So what we try to do in the next few minutes is to give you a bit of a perspective about how we would solve the problem. The first point is we think that it is easier to transform an organization starting from one big exemplary use case, which we've called unicorn, and then build the capabilities, the tech, and the team that goes with it. The opposite will result in a lot of frustration. Okay? However, one could say, well, that's easier said than done, so why are we doing this? Well, because we think that in the short term, with these unicorns, you can create value. Then you can actually gradually build up the capabilities to do that. You can de-risk the executional um, implementation 
risk of a certain project. For instance, building a data lake for three years to then figure out what to do can be extremely costly, extremely risky. So if you start from something which has a immediate business value, you will actually be better served. And finally, you can use that particular unicorn or flagship use case that you've done to show the rest of the organization the benefits of actually implementing it. Where do we find the unicorns? Where are they? Across the value chain, there is plenty of them. I think today we've discussed mostly uh, unicorns around claims, which I think is probably one of the areas where there is the highest uh, need for these new technologies and where is the highest possible gain, not only in efficiency, so speed, but also in effectiveness, so decision-making that could actually lower the loss ratios. However, if you look at this chart, you will see that there are plenty in the lead generation, in the cross and upselling, in the churn prevention, in renewal pricing or dynamic pricing, as uh, some people referred to uh, in the past uh, presentations, which all combined, they would be somewhat a implementation at scale of the AI and data analytics for a typical property and casualty retail insurer. However, I've hardly ever found a single insurer who has implemented all the ones that are in the green boxes at once, in production and being used. If that would be the case, there would be quite some money attached to it. So what we have done is that since we have knowledge about each one of those single use cases, we've taken an exemplary insurance company, one which would have a billion of premiums in retail insurance, mostly in auto, home, personal accident, and private health insurance. Then we started to think, okay, so let's suppose that over a wave of, say, about 18 months, one is capable of progressively developing and implementing these six use cases. So you start with pricing optimization, then you move on to retention, you automate claims and you implement the fraud detections um, algorithm, you move to a closed file review as opposed to a manual format by leveraging the wealth of the data that you've extracted massively with the automated claims platform, which we call CFR 4.0, you then move on to cross and upselling propensity models, and then you finally have a better prospecting, either by using digital marketing in a better way or by interacting better with your brokers. And if you would do that, you would basically be able to increase growth by five percentage points and to actually create value of about four to five percentage points in technical result, which is for a company of a billion, about 40 to 50 million. Now, if you look at this from the value creation viewpoint, it is very interesting to actually go after an implementation at scale and not to stop just at the proof of concept. So very often, the proof of concept isn't very well or clearly quantified, and as a consequence, the management doesn't embrace it, doesn't invest in the IT that is required to industrialize it, doesn't invest in the change management that is required to actually make it happen. Why? Well, we're speaking about the change management because we believe that the problem that we are facing with our clients, it is partly the algorithms. I think in this room, there are startups, there are people who have worked in the area of you know, data science that easily could tell that any problem could be tackled these days with a model. So the, solving the problem with a model is not the most complicated part. It's complex, but it's not impossible. The IT challenge, so linking what you're doing to the IT in production, requires a reprioritization of the investments or of the priorities of a certain company and putting the stuff onto their IT implementation plans. But again, it's not impossible. Now, what turns out to be one of the biggest challenges is actually to have people change their mind and the way of working. One anecdote, uh, we did a project of retargeting, so prioritization of 
new client leads with a French insurer, and the result of it was a set of clients that should have been contacted by both Salesforce and the call center. Okay? After three weeks, no, the results were exactly the same as the ones in the weeks before. So we wondered where the, the model was actually working. And so we went on to the call center and found out that the head of the call center had completely removed anything that was created by the model, because he didn't understand it and he didn't believe in it, and resorted all the clients in the old way. So they had been working three weeks in the old way, notwithstanding telling us that they had been working with our model. So after a thorough implementation of the model results, the campaign was two times as effective in the control test group that was using the model as it was with the old system. So I think the change management part of all of these projects shouldn't be underestimated. If we take it only from the tech or the modeling side, we're going to have great solutions, but it's very rare that it really, really brings impact in the insurance. Now, I want to use the few minutes that I have left to somewhat leave you with uh, our learnings from many years of trying to implement and successfully implement data science and AI with insurers. We would call it the uh, Selvin Gondel rules. You can name as many as you want. We found those seven to be uh, easy to remember and very, uh, very accurate with respect to the solution of the problems that you've seen in the first page. Well, the first one is, Let's start from the identification of the big use cases, the ones with a lot of money attached to it. Let's start from those and fund the journey of building the team and the tech attached to it, thanks to it. Secondly, and even more important than the first one, let's focus on the value creation and the industrialization, which means that on the one hand, for every use case, we need to have a business sponsor that actually wants to do it. On the other hand, when the thing has been developed and proved, it has to go into industrialization, it has to go into the production. Thirdly, we need the, same, we need the right data governance and the right organizational setup. So, easier said than done. Probably one of the golden nuggets that we have gotten there is that if you really true to your mind, you should allow the data governance and the data team to have the money to invest in the change projects as opposed to having them as a sort of support unit. Implementing agile ways of working. How many times the data projects are projects where the data scientists are sitting somewhere, there is an exchange of emails with the other departments people are somewhat telling what they need or what they would like to have in somewhat the old way, okay? The data scientists don't get it. The IT doesn't understand what needs to be implemented afterwards because it wasn't in the first place involved in the project. And as a consequence, when it comes out, it's impossible to use. Using Agile, being all together in the same room for at least three days out of five results into way better models and way better IT implementations. Overinvest in change management and data literacy. I couldn't stress this more. I referred to the anecdote before, but also you need to have a lot more engagement in the organization for people to understand the power. So most of the people in, in insurance companies are not aware of all what we have discussed here today. Data quality, okay. Yes, it's important, but you should do it in uh, conjunctions with the use case that you want to launch and not as a generic investment. And finally, build the data and the IT infrastructure as you go and not all at once hoping that you will find a use for it because that's going to be a better and more simple uh, way of investing your money but also of interacting with your IT departments. With all of this being said, I um, just wanted to thank you for uh, the attention. Hopefully, this few uh, minutes uh, that we shared our experience uh, around scaling AI were useful to all of you, and uh, hope to just mingle around and uh, talk to as many of you as possible during the day.
Thanks.